Hi guys, welcome to the Stamping Society August tutorial where this month we are featuring our favourite bundles from the brand new mini catalogue that went live last month. So the team have a whole heap of different projects this month and I have decided to feature the, well it's actually a suite but it's got a bundle in it that jumped out to me as soon as this catalogue, I well as soon as I saw this catalogue and that is the, I had the page, oh, we're just here, the Storybook Gnome Suite, but in particular, the Kindest Gnomes Bundle. It is adorable. I absolutely love it. And I'm featuring four items from the suite. So the only things I'm not using is the paper and the ribbon. So I'll jump right in. I'm going to show you how to make this fun card today, which also features the diorama um, dies. So a bit of 3D diorama there and lots of water coloring so here's a look at the bundle it has some beautiful stamps with gnomes and a mushroom and some coordinating dies and i'm also going to use these awesome diorama dies however you could replace these and do maybe some circle frames some square frames any kind of shape frame that you like so i have pre-cut some pieces here to show and I think I've just got one piece stuck so I'm just gonna sorry for the camera wobble there oopsie <clears throat> so I've just got some pre pieces pre-cut um, to save some time and you can purchase this tutorial with all of the six tutorials from the team um, which will have all of the measurements to make this card supply lists and tips um, Otherwise, you can also join my team and get that for free or place a qualifying order. And you can see all those details with a link to purchase the tutorial below. So I won't talk measurements, but I'll show you the supplies. I have a card base of basic black, which is a top folding card base. And I've got two pieces of basic white for my inside. And I have three pieces of basic white for my outside of my card. One of them is slightly larger and two of these are the same size and I'll talk about those in just a second. I have a scrap of shimmery white cardstock and it is important that you use a heavier base cardstock because we are gonna watercolor on this. I have a scrap of basic black for my sentiment and I have gone and pre-done the mushroom just to save a little bit of time and that is also on the shimmery white cardstock. So with these two smaller layers here, I've gone ahead and pre-cut the diorama dies. Now I have used the third and fourth smallest um, and the larger one of the two I have done on the front and I have just placed that on that layer, cut that out and the second one I placed on but I made sure that I placed it so that when I cut it out I was going to get some of that showing through. It will show through anyway because it's a smaller die but I just had it so that I could see some of that behind. So that's how I've lined them up. And I went and pre-did that ahead of time. So they're all my pieces that I need. Now the first thing I wanna do is my watercoloring because that's the bit that takes a little bit of time. So I've got my mushroom already, but what I wanna do is stamp these really cute gnomes. So I've got my piece of shimmery white cardstock here and I'm just gonna grab my little embossing buddy which yeah you can purchase these again now please mind my hands i've actually had an allergic reaction to a medication so i have got a rash everywhere so i've had to bandage them up so excuse that please um so i'm just going to ink up my gnomes in some versamark ink because i actually am going to heat emboss these now when i'm watercoloring i actually love um heat embossing because it helps you stay in the lines because you've got that embossed edge which will stop the water running over. Um, so it's a really handy tip when heat embossing and also your lines won't run. So I'm just going to heat emboss in some black. So I've got that all prepped and I have my black embossing powder. So I'm just going to grab my little spoon and go over the top of my gnomes and I just um, had these on one block because I found that easier but you could stamp them individually if you like so there's my gnomes done 
Now I can pop that to the side. Now I've got my heat, heat gun to the side here. So I'm just gonna give that a second to heat up. Today I'm gonna to be emboss, um, not embossing, watercoloring in lots of different colors, but um, the color choice is all up to you. So you can use whatever colors you have on hand, but I'm using quite a few, but that's totally up to you with what colors that you use. I've just chosen a color palette that I liked, but I will have the colors that I've used on the, um, the document, the PDF that you can purchase below. So I'm almost done. You just want to really make sure that your embossing pad is melted, otherwise you'll have some dramas when you go to add your water. You don't want any unmelted embossing powder on there. Okay, so there's my little gnomes and there are dyes to match these, as you can see with the mushroom, but I'm just going to colour these ones first. So I've bought some paper towel in, which I'm going to use to clean my brush as I go. And I did have some yellow on this before, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a clean. Okay, so I have, I don't even think I can show you how many colours I have because they're all over here on my desk, but I'm going to start with my mushroom. So I might actually just bring in this piece of paper I have here. Um, so I have done a huge array of colours for my um, mushroom. I'll start with that one. I have actually done a mixture of Poppy Parade, Sweet Sorbet and Blushing Bride for the top of the mushroom. And then for the bottom of the mushroom, I actually did, um, now I'm trying to remember all my colours, I did Calypso Coral, Pale Papaya and sweet sorbet i believe so what i have done to make this easier you can actually use your ink by popping some in the lid and pulling your ink from there but i've actually gone ahead and added some to my block and you simply turn your block over and press it into your ink pad um and i found that really easy and the cool thing about this is that um you, this will last ages you can reactivate it by adding water so i'm hoping i'll have enough left on here to do me so i'm just going to pick up some ink and actually what i meant to do is i'm just going to wet this whole area so i'm just doing the base of the mushroom and adding some water and then i'm going to go and add my lightest color which is the blush no sorry is this the blushing bride i think this is the pale i'm pretty sure this is the pale papaya so I'm just going to add that over the entire base of my mushroom. And then I'm going to go in with some Calypso Coral and come and fill in some of the areas that I want to be darker. So I'm just picking that right up off the block. Just going ahead and adding some of my shading detail. So... You can wait until each layer dries and that will probably give you more um, definition to where you've added the darker colours. So I'm really just building up my colour. I am a messy watercolourer. <laughs> now I'm going to come in, if you get too much water on, just dip some off onto your um, paper towel. And I'm just going to lightly press on my brush just to have that run a little bit. And I can tip my mushroom just to have that colour run a little bit. If you get too much of a blob happening. So I'm just going in and adding some more. I like to tip it occasionally just to get a more organic look. Kind of helps that water to run. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I'll show you a trick um, when that has dried a little bit. So now I'm going to go in and do my little door. And I've gone ahead and added a little bit of crumb cake. So that's 
this one and my pad's really old so don't mind the faded label so crumb cake and a little bit of soft suede so i've got that on my block here and actually i'm just going to go and add my water over this surface area here so i'm just really gently pressing that i'm going to add a little bit of water to activate that crumb cake and i'm going to go over the entire door just like that and I'll come back in and add some darker areas. Oops, just went out of the lines a little bit, but that's okay. Just a couple dark areas. Then I'm going to come in and add a little bit of soft suede. And I want to tip that a little bit. Now I want to do just my little window here. So I'm using the really fine point water painter. So this is the smallest one. They do come in three sizes. And I find this really good for detailed water colouring like this. So that is the base of my mushroom done. And I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm just cleaning off my brush to get that um, brown out of my brush. And then I want to go in and do the top part of my mushroom. So I'm just going to add some water over the base, over the whole area. And for this one, I have got the Blushing Bride, the Sweet Sorbet and the Poppy Prey. So I'm going to go in first and add my Blushing Bride. And Blushing Bride is not a colour that sees a lot of um, time in my craft room. I'm not quite sure why, but I did pull it out to use today on my mushroom. It's sort of got a little bit of an, I, I don't know, like a brownie orangey colour to it to me, but I'm not sure what everyone else thinks. I'm a bright scale, so I find Blushing Bride to be too light for me, and I don't tend to go for the light pinks, but... I like it on this one. So now this is where the fun comes in. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to the edges. And I'm going to come in with my um, sweet sorbet. I have to remember what the color was then. And I'm just going to add that. And I'm adding a little bit more water than I normally would. Um, because I actually want to tip that up. And I'm going to have that on a bit of an angle and just add a little bit more water so what that's doing is that's running up the mushroom which is pretty cool we get that um, running watercolor look and I'm just going to do underneath here as well and then I want that one to run the other way so I'm just going to tip it that way and then I'll just do this little arch here so I'm just using the fine point there and then to really give this some definition, I'm going to add my Poppy Parade, which it's probably hard to see on camera, but you definitely got that darker edge when you add that. So I just want to go lightly around the tops, the edges. So I'm going around the edge here and I'm adding some here. And I might add a little bit up here into my arch. And then we can do the same with this one and just tip the mushroom a little bit and let it run. So that's how you get that look. Now, when the other bits have dried a little bit, you can go in and if you feel like there's not enough colour in some areas, you can go back and add some more colour. So you don't have to leave it once you've added your first layer. You can go in and add a little bit more. Which I might just tip that a little bit. Whoopsie. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the mushroom. So I don't know how well you can see that. So that's still got to dry, but we've got our watercolored mushroom. So what I'm going to do now is I've got that pre-cut out, but I'm going to bring in my little gnomes and I'm going to um, keep the video running, but I'm going to put it on a bit of speed 
and so you can watch me watercolor and if you want to if you can't see the colors I'm using head over to the PDF or purchase the PDF and you'll get a better look now I'm just using Winker Stella on his beard I'm not and it sort of gives it a bit of a gray tone because I think I have used some gray on this but um yeah you can see me watercolor as I go okay so enjoy Okay, so I think that is the colouring done. So if you want a quick overview of what I've used, it's pale papaya for the hat and the little dress, coastal cabana for her shoes and her top. I've used petal pink for all the skin. Her hair is a mixture of crumb cake, soft suede and Cajun craze. And then he's got a coastal cabana hat, Cajun craze, a little chop and poppy parade shorts, as well as the soft suede and crumb cake little um, boots. So... That is how I have coloured those little gnomes. So I'm going to just let that dry for two seconds before I go and cut them out. So in the meantime, I am just going to prep the next little bit. So I'm going to bring in just a scrap sheet of paper. And what we want to do is grab our two layers that we've pre-cut with the diorama. So for this step, we're going to want some blending brushes and I'm going to use some blue as well as some green. So to start with, I'm just going to use my larger cut layer and I'm going to use a mixture of Granny Apple Green, Parakeet Party, Pool Party, as well as some Coastal Cabana. So I'm going to start down the bottom with my Granny Apple Green and my blending brush. And I'm just going to lightly apply some color in a circular fashion. And then I'm going to go and add some Granny Apple Green along the bottom of this piece. So I just want to go and build up the color along the bottom. So I like to add in layers and keep adding until I'm happy with the depth of the colour. And I like to start in this direction and then go and start in the other direction because I find that the first bit always gets a bit more colour. So I'll start in opposite directions where I can. So I think that's enough. Now I'm going to come in with my Parakeet Party and I'll use the same brush and I'm just going to add this above where I've added the Granny Apple Green and blend them in together. It's just a bit of a brighter green. It's a very subtle difference. Okay, so I worked to about halfway up and now I'm going to come in with my pool party and I want to add the third quarter in some pool party ink. So I think that's about enough. Then I'm going to bring in my Coastal Cabana and do the last bit of my card piece in Coastal Cabana. Coastal Cabana is definitely my favourite colour out of the Stampin' Up! colour family. I just adore it. It does sneak its way onto a lot of cards of mine. Okay, so that's that blended piece done. 
But before we finish, I'm going to bring in the smaller one. And all I'm going to do with this one is add Coastal Cabana. So I'm just adding some blue. And I'm, so I don't have to be particular about how I add it. I'm just blending on this piece. And I'm focusing around the center because that's really the only bit you're gonna see. You can do the edges because it's 3D, you may get a sneak of it. So you could probably just blend out onto the edges a little bit. That's probably enough. <clears throat> okay, so that's those two pieces done. And now we can actually mount those onto the card ready to go. So what I'm going to do before I do that actually is grab my Coastal Cabana Stamp and Write marker and using the brush tip end and the lid, I'm just going to flick some ink and that's going to give a little bit of fun happening behind that piece there. So what I'm going to do is clip over this piece and I'm going to grab some Stampin' Dimensionals and I want to add quite a few because we don't want the card to sort of bend and buckle so I'm going to add quite a few over my background here like that one there too and I will use my take your pick tool. oh that one's got no backing to remove the backings here Okay, and then this piece can adhere right over the top. They're the same size, so you just want to line them up right over the top of that other piece, like that. And this piece goes right on top of this one here. So I'm just going to grab some liquid glue and adhere. Sorry about that, my video just cut out. So <laughs> I've just stuck this to the white piece and now we can, to get super prepared, we can actually stick that right down to our black card base. So we've got those pieces done and out of the way. So I'm just using a little bit of stamp and seal and I can stick that right down to that card base like so. So now we've got our mushroom and our little gnomes. So I'm going to die cut out the gnomes. So I just want the two coordinating dies. And while you're die cutting, I have pre-done this. I have cut out um, five little mushrooms in Poppy Parade as well as, and they're hidden underneath my, my ink pads. I've cut out four bits of the grass. So that's this die cut here at a parakeet party and five stalks for the mushrooms out of soft suede. So that's all the die cutting to do. So I'll just go die cut those and be right back. Okay, so now we can get started to putting the card all together. So what I'm gonna do first is prep a couple of these die cut pieces that we went and did. So I've got all these little mushroom tops and they actually come with some embossing on them when you cut them out, which is really cute. Um, and I have five little bits of grass. But what I'm going to do is add a little bit more definition to these. And to do that, I'm going to take some ink. So I'm going to take some sweet sorbet ink um, for the mushrooms and just add a little bit of dark ink to one side. What this does is gives it a little extra definition. So that's my little mushroom tops done. And then for my grass... I'm going to take some Granny Apple Green ink and my blending brush and I'm going to add some darker bits on the longer blades of grass as well. Now I have cut out more than what you need for the outside of the card because two of the mushrooms and one of the grass is going to go on the inside of the card. Now to make this even extra cool, I'm going to use the Snowfall Accents Puff Paint. This stuff is super cool. Um, and all you need to do, and I'm not going to be able to show you heat up because my heat gun doesn't reach, but 
All I'm going to do is, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit to the blades of grass. For some reason, mine must have an air bubble, but that's okay. I'm going to use these typical new tweezers to hold that. And all you need to do is run your heat gun over the top, and it's going to puff up like snow. It's really cool. So I'm just going to heat that. It only takes a minute, and you'll see... When it starts to activate, it actually puffs up. So it's like puff paint. So you just want to make sure it's all puffed up. It's almost done. And that's how it turns out like little snowy bits of grass so I'm just gonna head off and quickly do the other three and I'll be back okay so I have got all my grass ready and I've also adhered the tops of my mushrooms to the little stalks so that I'm all prepared so now what we can go and do is put start putting the card together so I'm actually gonna tuck in a lot of my elements in and behind some of these um, diorama pieces so I want my little mushroom to go about there and I'm just going to sort of what I like to do is sit everything how I roughly want it before I stick that way I know where everything's going so I know that I want my mushroom <laughs> about there so I'm just going to add some liquid glue and that one's going to go behind both layers of the diorama so this particular card liquid glue is great because you sort of want some time to be able to move those pieces around and then I'm going to add this little gnome. I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue and then a little dimensional to his head. That way, that little piece of his head still sticks up. So just like that. And then this little gnome here is going to go on some dimensionals. But I do want to tuck some grass behind her. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and I want a little bit of grass coming out from behind. And I'm also going to add a mushroom behind her as well. So I'm going to add those elements in first before I adhere her because she is going to go on some dimensionals. So now I can go and add my dimensionals on the little girl gnome. Well, it could be a boy, but I'm going to call her a girl. <laughs> okay, so... I just want that mushroom just to tuck out a bit more. And then I'm going to go and add a couple bits of grass down the bottom here. So I sort of want those sticking out about, about there. Now, if you find that you've got good placement happening and you're like, oh, I've got to pick it up and get it back in the same spot, what I do is I don't. <laughs> I actually just lift it up and add a glue dot. And I find that really handy if I don't want to have to replace the item. So I can add those glue dots and that's now all stuck. And now I want to go in and add some mushrooms. So I'm going to add, oops, that's not quite stuck. So you do have to have the help if you take your pick tool sometimes for this. Another tip I have is if you're tucking behind and you find that you're not able to push it down, cut some of that stalk off and that way you'll have less to work with and be able to push it in behind. This one does not want to stick, so I'm just going to grab a glue dot because I did use liquid glue for the top of this mushroom and I lost the glue. I, that glue dot will be stuck to me somewhere. When I finish this video, I will find the glue dot. Oh, it's stuck to the card. Goodness me. That's all right. Okay, so I want to stick that one about there. So let's pick up that glue dot and use that to stick the mushroom. Glue dots, I love them. They're my best friend. Okay. So that's all the pieces that we've got down so far. These ones we're going to use for the inside of the card. So now I'm going to add, I'll add my Winker Stella now. So I'm going to spritz some Winker Stella over the top just there. And then what we want to do is bring in 
a scrap piece of basic black and I'm just going to rub my embossing buddy over the top and grab my Versamark again and I'm going to use the sentiment that says your kindness does not go unnoticed. So I know that this catalogue is I suppose a seasonal catalogue but these absolutely can be friendship cards. Um, this is sort of a thank you card. Um, lots of different things you can do and I love that. I love the little gnomes and I can see myself making lots of friendship cards with these. So I'm just going to heat emboss this in white on black, which is my favourite combo. And I've just got my heat gun here to the side, so I will heat that up just again. So that's my sentiment all done and I want to trim my sentiment into two pieces so you absolutely do not have to keep sentiments the way they come so in the case of this one it's in two lines um, I am not keeping it like that I'm cutting it into two you can even mask them off and um, only have parts of the word that's stamped I'm just going to cut each end on a bit of an angle so I've got pieces like that. like that and I can discard these pieces and now what I'm going to do is grab some more glue dots I'm just going to add a glue dot onto each end of that sentiment and I'm going to pop that just like that and then I'm going to grab the other one and because it's longer it'll probably need about three glue dots and then I'm going to stick that one probably I actually want to move this one up a little bit so I want that one up there and this one can go about there like that and then to decorate I'm going to use another product that came as part of the suite and that's these really cool fine sparkle adhesive fat dot gems and they come in four different colors and if you can see how sparkly and magical they are they are so pretty and I'm going to use the pale papaya and I think this is calypso coral so I'm going to use a mixture of both of those actually I'm going to use the um I think this might be pool party up here. I'm going to use all three of those colours. I'm just going to tuck that one in behind. So that is the front of the card down. How fun is that little scene with the gnomes and the little mushroom? Isn't it cute? And the inside of the card is super simple. I have two layers of basic white. One is a bit smaller. And I'm going to bring back in our scrap because I'm going to use some blending again so I've got my pool party and my blending brush just going to add a little bit to one corner so just the bottom right corner I'm just going to add a little bit of color down there you don't have to add too much nothing fancy and then I'm going to add um, my mushrooms so or sorry my grass and my mushrooms so I've got one little blade of grass here and I'm going to add my mushrooms so I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive and tuck a mushroom there behind and another one here so it just makes it match the outside of the card I love decorating the insides of my cards I think if I spend all that time on the outside, I want to make the inside pretty as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of Winkle Stella. Um, and then I can add a little bit of liquid glue and add this to... I love to double mat, so if you're wondering why I do this, it's just um, because I love double mats. And it also makes it more sturdy as well, I've noticed. Um, I use basic white thick cardstock, so... Um, it tends to make it 
even more sturdy. So I'm just going to add that to the inside of my card. And then we have a fun decorated inside to match the outside. So I hope you liked seeing a video using some watercoloring and that beautiful Kindest Gnomes bundle, um, which is definitely a hot favorite of mine in the new catalog. Be sure to go check out all the other videos. I've got the YouTube, ch YouTube channels linked below for the uh, other Stamping Society team using our favorite um, mini catalog bundles this month. Be sure to check below for how you can purchase the written tutorial, which will have all the PDF instructions plus links to everyone's video. Thanks as always for supporting me and the whole Stamping Society team. Be sure to hit like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any more videos. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.